بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I start in the name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful and welcome and greet all of you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu That means may God's peace, mercy and blessings be upon each single one of you And some of you who are from the Christian background would be surprised to find out that Jesus who we believe to be as a prophet It says in the New Testament, chapter 20 of John, verse number 19, as soon as Jesus went to the upper chamber to meet his disciples, the very first thing that he mentioned to them was, peace be upon you. So that's how we meet and greet each other with the greeting of peace. Now, I have a short presentation, by the way. What you see up there are my three children. Well, not the middle one up there, right? The middle one was running around somewhere. He's uh, three years old. I was born and raised in uh, India. As I was growing up, I used to watch a lot of Hollywood movies. And the only perception I had of America and Americans is that each single one of you, <laughs> each single one of you, you carry weapons, you go out with the weapons and you shoot each other out, right? I know that's not the case, right? So with that being said, I want to thank all of you. First and foremost, as I walked in here, I saw our guest with flowers and handing those to our Muslims over here. And for that, I want to applaud all of you for doing that, for showing us the alliances for the Muslims. So when we see the support, you know, this is overwhelming, by the way. This is overwhelming. When we see the support, Salman, where is Salman? Yes, you back. know, first and foremost, give him a big hand, by the way. He did such a good job of marketing, mashallah. <laughs> Last week, he gave me a call, you know, Brother Sabil. We have 70 people who RSVP'd. I said, wonderful, that is very good, <laughs> right? <laughs> Four days ago, he said, you know, Brother Sabir, that went at 100. I said, that's good. <laughs> Two days ago, he said 200. Yesterday, he said 300. And last night, he said maybe 400, right? I said, we have, Houston, we have a problem, right? <laughs> But then I said, you know, that's a good problem. I, I, I hope and pray that every mosque, every church, every synagogue has the same problem. Right? Yes, give us a big hand. Yes, yeah, wonderful. When I see presentations and open houses and alliances like this, uh, that restores faith in humanity. That restores, really. Because all day, all day long, wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage, the fear-mongering going on, we are all fearful. In fact, as I was driving here, we made a call to Norway. My in-laws are in Norway, by the way. I asked them the question, how do you feel in Norway, like far away from the U.S.? How do you guys feel up there? And almost every single person they said, we're all fearful. We're all fearful, not just the Muslims up there. They are all very much involved in the community and they said we are all fearful. But this is what we told them. God is always in control. Whatever happens, it is there is a long term benefit or some benefit in whatever is going on here. So as long as the good hearted, the good minded people come together, work together, inshallah, God willing. No fear mongerer, no hater, no Islamophobe, no anti-Semite is going to break the alliance, the friendship, and the humanity that we have, inshallah. Yes. Some of you may have came up, I mean, all of you came here for the support. Okay, let, let me take your mic, inshallah. These are a powerful thing. I'm being told that uh, in the back you cannot uh, hear me. Yes? No? You are able to. Okay. No? Okay. Let me take a different mic, inshallah. 
Can you hear me now? <laughs> right. Thank you. Did you all enjoy the food? Give them a give big hand to all the volunteers. Yes. They were working night and day, day after day, just to make sure that, yes, somebody liked it there. Good, wonderful. I received a WhatsApp message, by the way, saying that, you know what some people are saying? That they want to register the Muslim. Correct? So, some good-hearted people, they actually started a registry. And the name of the registry is registerus.today. And so far in the last two days, 21,000 people registered for it. Yes. Right? Come on. Where is my friend Ken over here? Ken. Give him a big hand, by the way. Ken. Yes. What Ken has mentioned that really touched my heart is that Ken said, you know, Dr. Sabil, if they are going to start a registry for the Muslims, I would be the first one to register. Yes, give him a big hand again. That really meant, by the way, yes. In case if they do start a registry for the Jewish people, I would be the first one. If they start, yes. If they start for the African American, I would be the first one. If they start for the women, I would be the first one, right? Come on, we have to. There would be a short presentation about Islam, the fundamentals, followed by the Q&A, because sometimes I do feel, just like as I was growing up in India, I had fear of the unknown, because I did not knew the wonderful American people. In the same way, some people may have the fear of the unknown, lack of knowledge. And that's one of the reasons that people may have Islamophobia, fear of the unknown. So I'm going to provide a short quiz just to see where you stand in your knowledge of Islam. Are you ready for it? Yes? Your prize would be extra samosas. <laughs> right? Come on. So here is the very first question to you. By the, by the raise of hand. By the raise of hand. Who do you think is the most mentioned prophet by name? in the Quran, and you cannot look at your Google search, by the way. All right, make sure. Okay, go for it, raise of hands, please. Ma'am. E, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, is that your final answer? Yeah? Well, sir, in the back. G well, she said Jesus, okay, fine. Jesus is mentioned 25 times, yes, ma'am. Abraham, peace be upon him, he's mentioned 69 times, second most number of times. Now we are down to four. <laughs> Moses, who said that? Give her, give her a big hand, she got it. All right, good, wonderful. Yeah. Moses is mentioned, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, 136 times. The most number of times in the Quran, followed by Abraham, and Jesus mentioned 25 times, and Muhammad. Peace be upon him. He's mentioned only five times by name in the Quran. So the point I'm trying to derive is that Muslims, I cannot be a Muslim if I do not believe in the prophets of the old. For me to be a Muslim, I have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, and Moses, and Abraham, and Noah, and David, and Ishmael, and Isaac, all the prophets. So that shows the commonality that we have. That, you know, I have studied the Bible, by the way. When I study the Bible and the Quran and I have studied the Vedas and different scriptures, I see close to 65 to 85 things in common. I usually say this, that there are more things in common that should unite us than things of differences that sometimes we fight over that divides us. So let's work on the commonalities that we have. Yes. Very important question here. Who is the only lady mentioned by name in the Quran? Raise of hand. Yes, sir. Mary, give her a big hand. Give him a big hand. Yes, you got it. All right, wonderful. In fact, those who may have read the Quran, the Quran has 114 sections, as we say, surahs or chapters. Chapter number 19 is known as the chapter of Mary. Yes, chapter, the whole chapter is dedicated by name to Mary. In fact, you'll be surprised to find out that uh, in chapter 3, verse number 49, God sent an angel to Mary 
And the angel is saying that, oh Mary, God has chosen you. God has purified you. And God has chosen you above all the women. That's the honor, the respect and the love that Islam gives and all the Muslims give to Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon them. In fact, when you see the Muslim ladies wearing the hijab, they want to reflect the chastity, the, the, the modesty that Mary used to reflect. Now this one is the easiest of all, by the way. Who do you think Muslims worship show of hand? Yes, ma'am. Give, give her a big hand. You got it. Allah, all right. Now, I asked the same question to a friend of mine in the hospital. You know, Joe, who do you think Muslims worship? And Joe, of all the answers, the one that he gave was number C, Buddha. I said, come on, man, Joe, you should know better. We don't worship a man or idol or creation. We only worship the creator, who in Arabic, we call his name as Allah. All right, this is the last one, by the way. When do you think Muslims came to the U.S.? Raise of hand. There's a, yes ma'am up there, yes. Yourself. Yes. Yeah, give her a big hand. The, in the 1660s, yes. In fact, in fact, you'll be surprised to find out that many of your ancestors when they came from Europe and different places, Muslims were already here to greet your ancestors. Yes? Yeah, come on, that's true. In fact, Muslims were celebrating Ramadan and Muslim holidays way before the, our Christian friends were celebrating Christmas with the Christmas tree. I wish and hope that uh, our friend Mr. Trump was here to hear that. <laughs> right? uh -huh. What do you see up here? What is that building? That's the Willis Tower, right? Sears Tower, Willis Tower. Now, one of the main architects of the Willis Tower was no other than a Muslim from Bangladesh whose name was Fazlur Rahman. The reason I have his uh, building up there is because I want to rub this in. <laughs> I want to rub this in. That Willis Tower is taller than the Trump Tower, right? <laughs> You may have heard the word Allah before. When we say the word Allah, we mean the same creator who created all of us, just in Arabic language, his word is Allah. Like in Hebrew language, it could be Jehovah, Elohim. In the language of Jesus, it is, a, it is Allah or Ilah. In the language of Arabic, it is Allah. Now these are some of the attributes of God. That we say that he is eternal, he does not have any parents. We also say that he does not have any children. We don't believe in the sonship, in the daughtership, or the uncleship, or the grandparentship of God. We say he's one, he's unique. We say he does not have any partners. For that reason, as you may have walked, when you walked in the mosque over here, you don't see any uh, statue of Muhammad, peace be upon him. You don't see any cross, you don't see any symbols. When we worship the Creator, we worship Him directly because we say that He's all-knowing and He's all-hearing. So, for the love of humanity, Islam says that God wants to guide humanity. And to guide humanity, Islam says that God did not came down and became a human. He remained God and He appointed prophets and messengers. It says in the Quran, chapter 16, verse number 36, as humanity was increasing, then God gave the same commandment to other prophets and messengers, namely, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the last one, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let me ask you this quiz question. The absolute submission to one God in Arabic language is what? It's in there, by the way. You're looking at it. All right, yes, ma'am. She got it, give her a big hand. All right, wonderful, two for two. Yes. So we say that Islam is not a new faith. Islam, submission to one God is the same fundamental truth that God gave to all the prophets and the messengers. So for that reason we say that Islam is not a 7th century faith. Islam was not founded by Muhammad peace be upon him. Islam was given to the very first human and all the prophets were given the same fundamental truth. Worship the creator and not the creation. 
So in wrapping up, my dear Muslims, my dear guests, my dear fellow Americans and fellow humans, there are challenges in the world. There is a lot of bigotry and fear-mongering and hatred and racism and terrorism out there in the world. But there are more people who are good-hearted and good-minded. They are. They are. And all of you, yes, all of you. When we work together, the way that the Quran says, as our esteemed scholar has opened with the wonderful recitation, I will just give the translation. The Quran says in chapter 49, verse number 13, that all oh mankind, means God is saying that all oh humanity, all oh mankind, I have created you from one single male and one single female and made you into peoples and tribes that you get to know each other. That you get to know each other. Not that you may despise each other, but you get to know each other. And then God says that the best amongst you is the one who is the most well-mannered person. So I hope and pray that all of us working together, we can defeat fear and fear-mongering and anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. And inshallah, God willing, we can establish societies which are based upon morality, which are based upon equality, which are based upon unity, justice and peace for all and when we do that inshallah god willing not only we can make america great again we can make inshallah the whole world great again thank you very much Ask them to get their cell phone and do a hashtag stand with them.